lesson, we're going to be talking about exchange rates, the determinants of exchange rates, and the difference between a floating exchange rate mechanism and a fixed or managed exchange rate mechanism. This video has a practice worksheet that goes along with it that you can find from the blog uh, on which this video will be posted. So this activity is something I gave my own IB economics students today in class. We started out with the market for two currencies. One, the market for US dollars in Japan, and the other, the market for Japanese yen in the United States. We should notice right away that these graphs are missing all labels. Therefore, before we can complete these graphs, we must first go find the actual exchange rates of these two currencies. To do that, we're going to go to the following website, xe.com. Okay, now we have a table of the value of several different currencies at today's exchange rates. We can see that the US dollar right here is currently equal, seven, equal to 75.9 yen. We'll round that to 76 yen. We can also see that the yen is worth 0 0.013 US dollars. With that information in mind, we can go back to our graphs and we can add the current equilibrium exchange rates to these graphs. So first, let's look at the US dollar. The current rate is 76 yen per dollar. So the next thing we need is a label for this vertical axis, which, since we're in the market for US dollars, is the number of yen per dollar. In the other graph, we can show the equilibrium exchange rate as 0 0.013 dollars per yen. Of course, we need to label our equilibrium quantities. We'll just call that QE, and we'll call this QE. We need to label our axes in the market for US dollars. We'll call this the quantity of dollars demanded and supplied in Japan. And in the market for yen, we'll call this the quantity of yen demanded and supplied in the US. Of course, our demand and supply curves need labels as well. In the dollar market, we'll call this the demand for dollars and this the supply of dollars. In the yen market, we have the demand for yen in the United States and we have the supply of yen in the United States. Now we've got two correctly labeled graphs. We can see that the price of one US dollar in Japan is 76 Japanese yen, and the price of one yen in the United States is 0 0.013 US dollars. The next question has us examine the impact of an expansionary monetary policy in Japan meant to stimulate domestic aggregate demand on the markets for Japanese yen in the United States and the market for US dollars in Japan. So here we have our original diagrams. Let's talk about what would happen if the Bank of Japan engages in expansionary monetary policy. An expansionary monetary policy means that the Bank of Japan is increasing the domestic money supply. How would that look on the market for yen or the market for dollars? The answer is it would have no immediate effect on the market for yen and dollars. However, a greater money supply in Japan will lead to lower Japanese interest rates. Now this has an impact on the market for yen and the market for dollars. As we learned in a previous video lecture, relative interest rates are a determinant of exchange rates. If Japanese interest rates fall, we can assume that foreign investors who can save their money in Japan or in the United States will demand fewer Japanese yen because the interest or the rate of return on investments in Japan has decreased. Therefore, the demand for Japanese yen will fall. American investors who are looking to earn the highest possible return on their financial investments will see that at lower interest rates in Japan, there is less profit to be earned on investments in Japan. This means that the demand for Japanese yen has decreased, putting downward pressure on the value of the yen. Let's say that the yen now only costs American investors 0 0.01 US dollars compared to the previous exchange rate of 0 0.013 US dollars. There is now at the lower exchange rate a smaller quantity supplied of yen in the United States due to the lower demand for yen in the United States. How will this affect the exchange rate for the US dollar? At the same time that the demand for yen decreases in the graph on the right, the decrease in US investment in Japan will mean there is less supply of US dollars in Japan. American investors are now demanding less yen, therefore they're supplying fewer dollars to the Japanese market. The decrease in the supply of US dollars in Japan puts upward pressure on the US dollar exchange rate in Japan. And we can actually 
calculate very easily the new value of the US dollar in Japan. Since the value of one currency is always the inverse of the value of the other currency, 1 over 0 0.01 tells us the value of the US dollar in Japan, which in this case is now 100 yen instead of 76 yen. The decrease in interest rates on Japanese assets reduces the demand for Japanese yen in the United States and thereby reduces the supply of US dollars in Japan. This puts upward pressure on the value of the US dollar and downward pressure on the value of the Japanese yen. The dollar has appreciated and the yen has depreciated as a result of the Bank of Japan's expansionary monetary policy which lowered interest rates and made investments in Japan less attractive to foreign financial investors. Let's move on and explain how this will affect aggregate demand in Japan. The next question asks us to explain the impact that the Bank of Japan's expansionary monetary policy will have on aggregate demand, output, and employment in Japan. To do this, we can use some basic macroeconomic analysis and combine it with our analysis of what happened in the foreign exchange markets. As we know, that an, in, an increase in the money supply in Japan will lead to lower interest rates in Japan. Lower interest rates should lead to an increase in domestic consumption and domestic investment in Japan since there is now a lower return for Japanese households who are considering saving their money therefore they're also more likely to increase their consumption. Lower interest rates also allow for higher levels of domestic capital investment by Japanese firms. But at the same time we have what's called a net export effect. The lower interest rate on Japanese assets will lead to a decrease in the demand for Japanese yen, which leads to a decrease in the exchange rate of the yen. A weaker Japanese yen should lead to an increase in the demand for Japan's exports abroad and a decrease in demand for imports within Japan. As exports increase and imports decrease from Japan, we should see net exports increase. So what we see is that consumption has increased, investment has increased, and net exports have all increased in Japan. All of these are components of aggregate demand. So the increase in aggregate demand that results from the expansionary monetary policy will lead to more employment for Japanese workers, a greater level of national income in Japan, and a higher price level in Japan. The expansionary monetary policy of lowering interest rates not only contributed to domestic consumption and investment, but through the net export effect, ultimately leads to an increase in Japan's net exports, further reinforcing the Bank of Japan's expansionary monetary policy. So we can see that lower interest rates stimulate both domestic consumption and investment, but also net exports through the effect on the Japanese yen. The next question in this activity has us consider the effect that widespread speculation that the US dollar will appreciate against other foreign currencies will have on the market for both the US dollar in Japan and the market for the Japanese yen in the United States. First let's define speculation. Speculation is simply the expectation that the value of a certain asset will either increase or decrease in the future. The asset in question here is US dollars. If, in, if international investors expect that the value of the US dollar will rise, they will wish to hold more US dollars now. This includes Japanese investors who may wish to invest in US dollars or US dollar denominated assets in the anticipation of their future appreciation. The expectation of the speculation of future appreciation of the US dollar should lead to an increase in the current demand for US dollars. At the same time, since Japanese investors now wish to hold more U.S. dollars, they are going to supply more Japanese yen to the U.S. market, increasing the supply of yen in the United States. Predictably, the increase in demand for U.S. dollars should cause the U.S. dollar to appreciate. Let's assume the new equilibrium exchange rate for the U.S. dollar is 100 yen per dollar. At the higher exchange rate, American households are willing to supply a greater quantity of Japanese yen to Japanese investors. The increase in the supply of Japanese yen in the United States will cause the value or the exchange rate of the yen against the dollar to decrease, 2.01, which is the inverse of 100. 
The decrease in the value of the yen will mean that American households will demand a greater quantity of yen in order to buy more Japanese goods and services. As we can see, speculation that the US dollar will increase in value leads to an increase in the current demand for dollars in Japan, causing the dollar to appreciate. At the same time, the supply of yen in the United States increases, causing the yen to depreciate. We'll move on to the next question now. The next question asks us to consider the likely impact that the speculation on the appreciation of the US dollar will have on the level of aggregate demand in the United States. We can use a similar rationale or logic as we did when the Japanese yen depreciated in the question above. We know that if the exchange rate of the US dollar increases due to speculation, this will make US exports more expensive abroad, leading to, leading to a decrease in the demand for US exports. At the same time, the stronger dollar will make imports more attractive to US households, therefore imports will increase. The decrease in exports and increase in imports causes net exports to fall in the United States, which causes aggregate demand to fall in the United States. Of course, a decrease in aggregate demand will lead to lots of undesirable consequences for the US, including a fall in employment, a fall in national income, and possibly even a fall in the average price level, or deflation. So for all of these reasons, the strengthening of the US dollar is considered undesirable due to speculation in the United States foreign exchange market. Let's say that the US government and the US central bank, the Fed, are unhappy about the fluctuations in the value of the US dollar. 100 yen per dollar is simply too harmful for the US economy. Instead, the US government wishes to maintain a stable exchange rate at a range between 80 yen and 70 yen. In other words, the US government wishes to place a price ceiling on the value of the dollar at 80 yen and a price floor on the value of the do dollar at 70 yen. This is called a managed exchange rate system. Next, we're going to see what would happen if the market equilibrium exchange rate of the US dollar were to increase above 80 yen per dollar or fall below 80 yen per dollar. And we'll examine ways that the US central bank can maintain its managed exchange rate in the range between 70 yen per dollar and 80 yen per dollar. For this next question, let's assume that market forces put upward pressure on the demand for dollars in Japan and push the equilibrium exchange rate up to 90 yen per dollar. This could be shown as an increase in the demand for US dollars in Japan to a level greater than the desired equilibrium interest rate of 80 yen per dollar. If demand for dollars increases to a level that under free market conditions would cause the exchange rate to rise to 90, then the US government or central bank must now intervene in the foreign exchange market to devalue its currency back to an equilibrium level of at the most 80 yen per dollar. In order to keep the exchange rate within the desired range, the US central bank has a few options. One thing it can do is reduce interest rates in the United States. A decrease in interest rates should bring demand back down to a level that meets the desired objective of an exchange rate of only 80 yen per dollar. Another option would be for the US central bank to buy large quantities of Japanese yen. This would increase the demand for yen and increase the supply of dollars, which again would push the value of the currency back to a desired level. So an, an intervention involving an increase in the supply of US dollars on foreign exchange markets could also bring the exchange rate back down to the desired level. Thirdly, the US government could impose exchange controls. An exchange control refers to a policy that reduces the total amount of foreign investment in the United States and thereby reduces the demand for US dollars on foreign exchange markets. Such a control might limit the quantity of US government bonds that a Japanese investor can buy. Uh, it might otherwise limit the amount of savings among Japanese investors in the United States. Any of these limitations which would bring down demand and reduce the exchange rate back to a desirable level within the range. If market forces put upward pressure on the value of the US currency, the Central Bank of the United States or the government can impose any of the, the three policies outlined here. Reduce interest rates, would re which would reduce demand for US dollars on the foreign exchange market. Buy large quantities of Japanese yen, which would increase the supply of dollars and put downward pressure on the exchange rate. Or implement, implement exchange controls, which would reduce the demand for US dollars in the United States and thereby bring down the exchange rate. 
Finally, let's assume that market forces, instead of putting upward pressure on the value of the dollar, put downward pressure on the value of the dollar and push the equilibrium exchange rate to 60 yen per dollar, which is below the desired minimum value of the dollar of 70 yen. As we can see here, a decrease in the demand for dollars in Japan could cause a depreciation of the dollar to an undesirably low exchange rate. Now, what could the U.S. government or central bank do to restore an equilibrium exchange rate within the desired range of 70 yen per dollar to 80 yen per dollar? Quite the opposite of what we saw when the dollar appreciated above the desired range, the opposite policy could be implemented in the United States. Now, an increase in U.S. interest rates could, could be implemented by the central bank, which would cause the demand for dollars to increase and restore an equilibrium exchange rate within the range desired. In addition, a large sale of Japanese yen by the U.S. Central Bank could push down the value of the Japanese yen and the U.S. could buy up some of its own currency, increasing the demand for dollars on foreign exchange markets and moving us back to an equilibrium exchange rate between 70 and 80. Finally, the U.S. government could implement exchange controls in the opposite direction, limiting the demand among U.S. investors for Japanese assets. This thereby would reduce the outflow of U.S. dollars from the United States and reduce the supply of U.S. dollars in Japan, causing the U.S. dollar to appreciate back to a level within the range desired. So let's briefly review what we've gone over today. We've seen how a change in relative interest rates due to a central bank policy can lead to an appreciation or a depreciation of a nation's currency. We've also gone over speculation and decided how speculation of an increase in the value of a currency can lead to a current appreciation of the currency due to increased demand for that currency. Finally, we've talked about how foreign exchange controls, manipulation of interest rates, and purchases of foreign currencies by a nation's central bank can lead to a revaluation or a devaluation of a nation's currency to keep it within a range of desired exchange rates in order to maintain several macroeconomic objectives, including stable net exports. Thanks for watching today's video lecture. Be sure to download the PDF from the blog on which you can practice the different exercises we've gone over today.